Merging datasets is one of the most fundamental parts of using Stadia because it allows you to put together multiple pieces of information in a very useful and powerful way. So today I'll guide you through what different merge types there are, how to merge and how to be very careful when you merge information. So let's open up again our old auto data set. This is the complete data set with everything in there. So the main identifying information here is the make command, which shows you the type of car that we're actually talking about. And then you have a whole bunch of information. Now, for the sake of arguments, let's try to merge in the price information. So let me just for the sake of arguments, preserve the file, which makes in temporary storage. And then I keep only the make and price of the file so that we're allowed to merge it back. And then I'm going to say drop if the number is smaller than 10 or the number of rows is larger than 70. So now we'll kill off part of our data set. And then we're going to save the file. Save as, we go to our folder, Stata, videos, new files, data files, and we have price temp, a temporary file for now. So we've saved up this file. And then we restore to go back to the initial data set that we preserved. We could have also just loaded it, but I want to show you how this command works. So now we have part of a data set and we have this data set, which is still complete. So for now, let's drop the price variable and let's re find out one of the names of the makes. And I want to change that one too, for the sake of illustration. So now we're going to replace make is Batmobile if make is this specific car. So now we've a different observation and a full sample. So there's different identifiers in both files with different coverage. And now let's show, now let me show you what happens if you merge it in. So to merge something, you go to data, combine data sets, merge to data sets, and you get to see the following screen. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is think about the dimensionality of the data. Is it one to one? Or is it some other combination of many to one or one to many or many to many? This last item, never ever use it. It basically matches everything by observation. First observation here to second, first observation in the other data set. It's very easy if you change the order of your data set to destroy everything what you're doing and merging correctly. So never use that. In the worst case, if you have two data sets, at least just make an identifier in both data sets that you sh are sure is correct and then merge them on that self-made identifier. So never use this. One to one means there is one observation in one of the data sets for one observation in the other data sets. Many to many means that there are many observations in this data set that connect to many observations in the other data set. And these are combinations of the two in which there is one to many of them or many to one of them, depending on which side of the data that you look at. For now, we're gonna work with a one-to-one -one data set. Now, we need to specify three things after we chose the type of merge. The first one is which file. So I'm gonna open up my price temp file that we just now created. So I'm opening up this file and now we can do the following things. We can select a variable in which we want to merge it which is, in our case, the make, because that's the identifying variable that we have, that is the same in both data sets. And then we go to options and we click populate, which we can only do after we have selected the file, which opens up the file and shows me the variables. Then it tells me I wanna have price. Now you can do this without doing it, but then you get all of the variables, which you often don't want, or you might accidentally mistype something, giving you problems. And this I won't touch for now. So you do this, you select the type, you select the linking variable, identifying variable, you select the data set, and then you select which variables you actually want to have. And you press arc. And then you get the following thing. 
merch two, merch three, and sometimes you would also get merch two here. So what this respectively means is that for 61 of the observations, there is a perfect merge. For 13 of the observations, there is only a partial merge. And for zero of the observations, there is only a merge using from the using part. So what this would look like if we would slightly change the thing. So now we will basically get ourselves the following item which is called underscore merge. That's a very useful variable. Here we see if it's master only, means that we only have information from the master file, including our wrongly specified car. And here we see that there's no price information because we couldn't merge it. When the match is three, we see that the merge was successful. So we have both our cars and our price information, which is very useful. So if we want to have only the items remaining where we have a perfect match. We could do something like drop if merge is not equal to three. That would kill everything else. Now just for the sake of argument, go back one step, drop the price, drop the merge. Now we're back at the old scenario, except that, oops, we still have the cases where we have all of the cars in here. So now I'm going to say drop if underscore n is larger than 40. So now we kill most of our data set and on purpose. Because if we redo our merge command like we did before, we now get 1, 2, and 3. So for the first one, the one like we had before, we have the old information, but not the price. For the second one, that we didn't have before, we have only the price, but not the other information because we just deleted it. And for the number of threes, we have all of the information. And if we want to now retain everything that was in the old data set and everything that we have perfectly merged, we could say um, drop if underscore merge is two. And then always drop the merge variable because it makes the same variable every single time that you do this analysis. So if you merge it again, it will make a new merge variable. If it already exists, it will break down. So don't do that. If you don't want to have the merge variable, you can do no generate, and then it won't give you the merge variable. So this is how you merge things in Stata. I hope that you find this tutorial useful. You're now allowed to easily put together parts of data set using Stata. So you can have different Excel or CSV or other database type of files, and then you can put them together in Stata using this way. It's most important that you ensure you have a proper identifier and that you have no duplicates in the identifier because then the merging goes wrong. So make sure that you clean your identifiers, make sure they're unique, and then subsequently merge them throughout the data sets. You can, if you absolutely have to, merge on things like company name or stock name or f building name uh, but that's really tricky because names can be slightly different across both of the files and therefore it will break down so matching on something like a standardized address or an isin or a qsip is a way better way to go about it because these things should be unique across both of your files thank you for listening and until the next data tutorial